This video is a critique, which is considered fair use under Section 107 of the Copyright Act, 1976. I do not own any of these clips. This is simply fan-made for entertainment purposes only. Futurama is owned by 20th Century Fox, Matt Groening, David X. Cohen, Comedy Central, and Rough Draft Studios. Enjoy! Futurama is easily one of the greatest animated shows ever made. And honestly, what more can you expect from a show that was created by the same guy who created The Simpsons? All of Futurama's episodes consisted of some kind of clever writing, whether it be with great jokes, great stories, great characters, and in the cases of these 10 episodes and then some, all of the above. I already did a top 10 list of the best episodes from season 6 and 7, so this list will only contain episodes from seasons 1 through 5. Now, I just wanted to say that this was easily the hardest list I've ever had to make. I'm cutting out a lot of episodes that I think are amazing. Hell, I could have done a top 20 list and I'd still have to cut out a few episodes that I adore. I'm sure this is going to be the hardest list that I'll make for some time, at least until I do a top 10 South Park episodes list. Oh, God help me when I do end up doing that. I'm also going to include my top 10 favorite episodes of Futurama as a whole at the end of this video, so you guys will know my final ranking for each episode. Anyway, here's my list. Enjoy! Number 10. Put your head on my shoulder. If you watched my last top 10 list, you know I'm a big fan of Fry and Leela as a couple. And if you watched my last review, you know I was very disgusted by Amy and Bender as a couple. But honestly, Fry and Amy make a pretty damn entertaining couple. I mean, yeah, I wouldn't want to see this carry out throughout the series, but it definitely works for a plot point in just one episode. In this episode, Amy ends up buying a new car and invites Fry to take a ride with her in it, where they end up draining all the car's gas on Mercury. While waiting for a tow truck to arrive, the two start to get to know each other and end up bonding, resulting in them having sex while getting towed. So while they're towing us, you want to do it? Yeah! <laughs> After only a short time dating, however, Fry ends up feeling suffocated by Amy since, well, he's Fry. He's a paranoid dumbass, which is why we love him. Don't you get it? She's smothering me. Hi. You see? You see? Now she's bothering me when I'm at work. While trying to break up with Amy, Zoidberg ends up causing a car accident, resulting in Fry's head having to be stitched onto Amy's body. Looks like we'll be spending a lot more time together, Fry. Oh, that's just so unfortunate. Like, just imagine that. Having to share a body with your ex who you can no longer stand to be around. I mean, after that, the jokes just write themselves. I mean, Fry ends up having to join Amy on her Valentine's Day with a new guy. That's... That's just too funny for words. Let me pick up the check. Definitely an episode that'll make you glad you're single. Now that I'm single, I'll attract all sorts of women. With my body, I think you might only attract one sort of woman. Oh. Oh. Number nine. I second that emotion. Now, Bender is probably the most beloved and entertaining asshole in the history of animation. I mean, you got your Rogers, you got your Bryans, you got your Trumps, but there's only one Bender, and he blows all of them away. After getting fed up with Nibbler, Leela's beloved pet, he flushes Nibbler down the toilet. Wait, what? Bender, what's going? <gasps> no! Hey, can't you see I'm using the toilet? Ah! That's horrible! This is absolutely horrible! Why, why, why am I laughing? Well, well, Leela is of course distraught, and because Bender is unable to sympathize with her as... How would you feel if I flushed Fry down the toilet? Only one way to find out. He doesn't care about other people's feelings. Farnsworth events a chip that will allow Bender to feel Leela's emotions. If by allow you mean force... Oh yeah, force. Oh, oh, that's awesome. 
See, it's not only satisfying to see Bender feel the pain he's caused, but it's done so perfectly. Every time Leela starts crying or feeling low, Bender is forced to feel it, and because he doesn't know how to deal with it, he ends up handling it in a very over-the-top and fucking hilarious way. You think you're so hot? What? The only reason you get all the guys is because you dress like a tramp. This is an episode that's just so hilarious, you'll cry your eyes out from laughter. I'm so lonely. I'm gonna go eat a bucket of ice cream. In a, a bucket of... I got, uh, the spoon's in the foot powder! Number 8. Sting. No, not that sting. No, not that one either. Eh, close enough. Now, in this episode, after being sent on a mission to get honey from a ginormous honeybee nest, Leela takes a baby queen so the crew can make their own honey. And the baby queen kills Fry. I, I'm not even joking, it actually kills Fry. ends up feeling incredibly guilty and ends up going insane, literally losing all sense of what is real. Fry? Is that you? This episode is just trippy as shit. I mean, just look at this scene as an example. You, you killed kill Fry! You killed Fry! You killed Fry! Stop it! You Stop it! Fry. Fry. Yeah. You you killed Fry. Yeah, this episode is filled with stuff like that, and you actually watch Leela's sanity slowly slip away with each scene. I'll find Fry's coffin, get his corpse, and keep it under my mattress to remind me that he's really dead. Oh, my God. This all climaxes to a twist ending that I won't reveal, but it really does tie everything that happens together pretty nicely. Check it out. You won't be disappointed. Though, you will never want to go near bees again. Number 7. Roswell that ends well. After Fry accidentally causes a wormhole to open up, the crew ends up getting sent back into time. After crashing the ship, Bender is flung out and his body is destroyed. So the crew leaves Zoifer behind to pick up the pieces. Everyone else, take While this is going on, the crew ends up discovering that they time travel to 1947 and are in Roswell, New Mexico. That's no flying saucer! That's my ass! My god! This means the flying saucer that crashed in Roswell was us! Now, that's absolutely clever writing. This whole plot ties in well with the actual Roswell alien sighting. It's probably the best setup I've seen in all of Futurama. Anyway, Fry ends up wanting to visit his grandfather, who was stationed in Roswell, but starts panicking after Farnsworth tells him that if he kills his grandpa, he'll cease to exist. Existing is basically all I do. Fry ends up actually killing his grandfather anyway because, well, again, Fry's paranoid as hell. And again, that's why we love him. And you are out of here! Fry ends up comforting his now widowed grandma, Mildred, who instantly comes on to him. Since Fry still continues to exist, he mistakenly assumes that Mildred isn't his grandma, resulting in them having sex. And well. It's impossible! I mean, if she's my grandmother, who's my grandfather? You are! Now this joke is probably the most famous and most referenced joke in Futurama history. Or do something disgusting, like sleep with your own grandmother. It's a genetic abnormality which resulted when you went back in time and performed certain actions which made you your own grandfather. Time travel is very dangerous. You could wind up as your own grandpa. Definitely an entertaining and timeless episode. Hey, don't cut that. I need that to speak. Number six. The day the earth stood stupid. Don't let the title fool you because this is one of the smartest written episodes of the series. When Leela questions her pet Nibbler's intelligence, 
the universe ends up getting attacked by floating brains. And Nibbler ends up actually being a very intellectual creature called a Nibblonian, who saves Leela from the brain attacks. The brains end up turning everyone into complete idiots, but Fry ends up being the only one not affected, ironically making him the smartest person on the planet. Attention New New Yorkers! Stop acting so stupid! After the Nibblonians explain to Leela what's happening, they send her back to Earth, where she inadvertently becomes an idiot as well. Ow! Fire hot! The Professor will help. Oh, fire indeed hot! Fry ends up tracking down the Brain's leader at the library, which results in one of the best climaxes in the show's history, as Leela, Fry, and the giant Brain leapfrog from book to book, meeting a ton of well-known characters. Tom Sawyer, you tricked me. This is less fun than previously indicated. This episode's writing is just beautiful. Its plot is actually really interesting, the villains are creative, and the climax is incredibly intriguing. Probably the only episode you can watch and actually want to pick up a book after. A gold doubloon to the man who first spies the white whale. Big whale over there. Arr, I saw it first. Number five. A big piece of garbage. After getting humiliated at an annual symposium, Farnford invents a smelloscope, so instead of seeing faraway planets, you can smell faraway planets. Anyone else feel like that's something you'd see on Kickstarter? Well, anyway, Fry ends up discovering a horrendous odor in space. I dare say Fry may have discovered the smelliest object in the known universe. Oh, oh, name it after me! This order turns out to be a giant garbage ball that was made from 20th century garbage that's on a collision course for New New York. And the rest of the episode focuses on how to save the city from being buried alive by garbage. Eat my shorts. Okay. Mmm, shorts. Now, while the episode itself is very entertaining, what puts it on this list is this incredibly hilarious mayor. I just love this guy. Not only does he have one of the funniest names ever, but he has some of the funniest lines in Futurama history. My god, the senile old man is right. Do you mean him or me? Him. Oh. It's time to take action. <laughs> Stephanie, cancel the maid for today. Have her come tomorrow. I now present you with the Academy Prize which we confiscated from Dr. Wernstrom after it became apparent that he was a jackass. And unlike most mayors in other animated comedies, he's actually not an idiot. He takes action, he cares about his city, and he honestly seems like a responsible guy on top of just being hilarious. I like vote for a guy like this. Mayor Poopenmeyer for president 2016! Come on people, let's get this going! Anyway, this episode is a ton of fun. It's certainly the exact opposite of its title. Ah, we're gonna die! Right? Right. Ah! Number four. The Devil's Hands are Idle Playthings. Fun fact! This was the series finale of Futurama after Fox cancelled it. And judging from the ending, I would say that it was intentionally made to be the series finale, but if it wasn't, damn did they go out on a high note. In this episode, Fry wants to learn how to play the holophoner, a musical flute-like instrument that actually produces perfect images to the music. Now there's an idea! Fry makes a deal with the devil to get better hands so he can become a better holophone player, and ends up getting the devil's hands. Oh, what an appallingly ironic outcome! It's not ironic, it's just coincidental! After becoming the greatest holophone player in the world, Fry decides to make an opera about Leela. And the devil, angered by not having his hands, tricks Bender into deafening her so she can't hear the opera. It's not ironic, it's just me! Take this! <sighs> Ooh, out of aerosol! The devil uses this to trick Leela as well into marrying him for New Year's, resulting in one of the best scenes in the show's history. Though they'll play our reception if all goes as planned. Unless Fry, you surrender! My hands! Normally I don't put series finales on my top 10 list, but I'm gonna make an exception for this one, since it's not technically a series finale anymore. 
And it's without a doubt one of the most intense episodes Futurama ever put out. But if I keep them and she marries him, then he probably won't want me dating her. Number three, The Deep South. All right, all right, all right, I know, this is probably the most shocking episode to see on this list in general, let alone in the top three. This isn't the most well-written episode of Futurama, and it certainly isn't the most well-reviewed. So, why is it on the list? Well, in my opinion, this is the most underrated episode of Futurama. The episode starts out with the crew taking a fishing trip, and Bender ends up catching a gigantic fish that pulls him down to the bottom of the ocean. My speedos! While searching for some food, Fry comes across a mermaid named Umbriel, who he starts dating. Where did the mermaid come from? Well, it's actually from the lost city of... Wait for it... Atlanta! <laughs> I don't get it. Now, if you saw my last top 10 list, you know that I put the $6 million Mon at number 4, solely because I found it to be the funniest episode of the revived series. Well, that's how I feel about the Deep South. Except, I think it's 10 times funnier. There are jokes galore in this episode that all land perfectly. This scene here is a prime example of that. What do you say we make it interesting? Everybody kick in five bucks. There, wasn't that interesting? How the hell have I never thought of that? That seems like such a bland, predictable joke, yet I've never thought of something like that. You know what? I'm using that the next time I go out with friends. There's typical jokes that take shots at Zoidberg where he finds a house and decides to live like a hermit crab at the bottom of the ocean. But instead, his house burns down. Underwater. From Bender's lit cigar. How did this happen? That's a very good question. You know why that happened? Because he's Zoidberg. Even the impossible will happen to him. And you know what? I know this has been touched on before, but this was the first anything that I saw that actually questioned how you would sleep with a mermaid. What the hell is that? Yeah, I'm a little confused too. How do I, you know, with the tail and all? I'm not your first, am I? I mean, I, I lay my eggs, then I leave, and you release your fertilizer. I know Family Guy did a funny joke about this as well. Like, if you had a man's body and fish legs, then it'd be different. Yeah, but then I wouldn't have a penis. Well, but I... See, there you go. I just poked a huge hole in your logic. But Futurama, as far as my knowledge goes, did this first. <sighs> Why couldn't she be the other kind of mermaid? With the fish part on top and the lady part on the bottom. I do admit this episode isn't the best written in terms of story, but in my opinion, it's easily the funniest episode Futurama has ever made. Its jokes are not only clever, they are phenomenal. And this is why I feel it belongs at number three. What? I put sunblock on you. Well, it didn't work. <sighs> number two. Jurassic Bark. This is probably the most famous, most loved, most enjoyed episode of Futurama. So, why am I only putting it at number two? Well, I'll explain why later. In this episode, Fry finds the fossilized remains of his dog Seymour on display. He asks Farnsworth if he can clone Seymour, to which Farnsworth says he can. This makes Bender incredibly jealous, and eventually he tries to destroy Seymour. But he has a change of heart when he sees how much it hurts Fry. And that is why they call me Bender the Magnificent. Hey, where'd everybody go? When Farnsworth starts cloning Seymour, it's revealed that Seymour lived 12 more years after Fry got frozen. Fry stops the cloning process because he feels that Seymour must have forgotten about him, and that it'd be best to just let Seymour rest in peace. And then, this scene happens. Why do I put this at number two? Well, because even though I enjoyed this episode, it's a little too depressing for me to consider it the best. 
What makes most of these episodes work for me is that when they try to be deep, there's usually a good blend of comedy and emotion. And I feel Jurassic Park was a little too outweighed by emotion. Is this a bad thing? No, it's still a wonderful story. It highlights the bond between man and his dog very well. Seymour is such an enjoyable little doggy, and the ending is probably one of the biggest tearjerkers ever. Even though I don't consider it the best Futurama episode, I definitely consider it one of the best episodes I've seen of any show ever. That a boy, Seymour, right here waiting for me as always. Just like that huge mushroom in my shower. Now this is normally the part where I do honorable mentions, but instead, I thought I'd show you the episodes I would rank 11 through 20. Like I said, I had to make some rough cuts, and these episodes all could have been on my top 10 list. There are just so many episodes I absolutely adore from this show, and it's definitely a show I miss. But I feel, even if they continue to come out with some new episodes, none of them would top this episode as my absolute favorite. Number 1. The Luck of the Friarish. Yeah, when Jurassic Park wasn't number one, I think it was a safe bet that this one would be number one. This, to me, is the most perfect example of why Futurama was one of the greatest animated shows of all time. The episode focuses around Fry being fed up with his bad luck, and he ends up remembering a seven-leaf clover he found that brought him nothing but good luck. When he sets out to find it, he finds out that Yancey, his jackass older brother, who apparently changed his name to Philip J. Fry, found it and used its luck to achieve everything Fry wanted to achieve before he got frozen. He stole my clover, he stole my name, and he stole my life! And now he broke my hand! His legend lives on! This episode really tries hard to show the issues Fry had with Yancey, and after a while, you really do start to get a sense that Yancey was not very fond of Fry. Why do you always have to steal everything from me, Yancey? Find your own life and live it! Stop, Ellen. Word. Fry decides to dig up his brother's grave, as this is where the clover ended up. But he ends up finding out that the person who really has his seven-leaf clover, who really has his name, and who really achieved everything Fry wanted to achieve, was his nephew, who Yancey named after him and gave the clover to. Son... I'm naming you Philip J. Fry, in honor of my little brother, who I miss every day. I love you, Philip. And I always will. Now, while Jurassic Bark had the most emotional ending in the series, this episode, to me, had the most perfect ending. It kept all the emotion locked away until the ending, and it stayed comedic and adventurous up until this scene. And this scene right here, of Fry leaving the clover with his nephew, was all the ending needed. This episode is not only beautiful, it's funny, it's thought-provoking, it's entertaining. It's everything Futurama was summed up in one single episode. While this was my hardest list to make, surprisingly... It had the easiest number one episode I could have picked. Don't you forget about me.